Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the limit of a vector function. So the limit of a vector function r is defined by taking the limit of its component functions. So if r of t is a vector function with components f of t, g of t, and h of t, then, I'm missing an angled bracket, let's put that in there, then the limit as t approaches a of r of t, it's just the vector that you get when you do the limit as t approaches a of f of t, the limit as t approaches a of g of t, and the limit as t approaches a of h of t. Okay. So, we're going to do a limit, and I want to remind you of some of the skills you've learned in Calc 1 and Calc 2. Those are still with us, so we still need to know how to do limits. And one of the big skills we learned back in Calc 1 and Calc 2 was something called L'Hopital's Rule. Okay, so let's take a look at our example. So just by the definition, this limit of the vector valued function requires me to go in here and take the limit of each piece. So I'm just going to write this down as a limit as t goes to 0 of first component, e to the t minus 1 over t, comma, limit as t goes to 0 of second component function, which is the square root of 1 plus t minus 1 all over and then the third component, we've got the limit as t goes to 0 of 3 over 1 plus t. All right, so we'll try our easiest method first. Can we just let t go to 0? Can we substitute t equals 0 in? What happens here? We get e to the t minus 1 over t. If we put in 0, we're going to get 0 over 0. So I get 0 over 0, and this is what's known as an indeterminate form, and it's going to require me to use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, let's analyze what happens over here. If I put in uh, t equals 0. Similarly, for the second component, we're going to get 0 over 0 again. I'm going to need to use L'Hopital's rule here as well. And for the third component, if I put in t equals 0, I just get 3 over 1, so that's fine. I'm done with that limit. Okay, so let's apply L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says that we need to do the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. So for the first component, I still have to write down limit as t goes to 0 because I haven't done the limit, right? So let's write down derivative of the numerator is e to the t. The derivative of the denominator is just 1. Second component, I'm going to do L'Hopital's rule again. And for our second component, we're going to need the limit as t goes to 0 of the derivative of the numerator, which is 1 half. 1 plus t to the negative 1 half over 1. And the third component, we already did that limit and we found out it was just 3 over 1 or 3, so we can write that down. Now, trying to evaluate the limit, let's plug in t equals 0. We get e to the 0, which is 1. Second component, plugging in 0, we get 1 half over the square root of 1, so that's just 1 half and third component is 3. 